Hey there guys, welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my next review for my wash through of Stargate SG-1. So in this case, it's going to be my review for Season 2. So as I mentioned in the last review for, or for season, on my Season 1 review of Stargate SG-1, this is my wash through of the key episodes of the show so I can get through and see how it holds up and all of that. I'll have a link in the show notes for the show notes that, in, that list the episodes that I watched in the season. But a summary from that website of the season is that in the second season, SG-1 will meet new allies as Apophis rallies his forces against his enemies. So basically, for the season, we start off right where season 1 left off. We are starting with the attack on Earth by Apophis and his two motherships as they enter the solar system and approach Earth. And the team, or basically Stargate Command, has to figure out um, how they're going to repel the attack. They have um, the one lieutenant guy who thinks that his two Nakoda and Rich Bombs are going to help. But we have Star, or we have SG-1 defying orders and making and following Daniel Jackson's, um, or going to Daniel Jackson's coordinates. And as it turns out, they end up on one of Apophis's motherships that actually belongs to his son Chlorel who is in Scar's body. Um, they end up saving the day, which is to be expected since we know that there's going to be another 11 seasons of SG-1. But essentially, the second season of the show now, because of that, um, not only has SG-1 exploring the galaxy but using their Stargates, but also building alliances. Um, one of those alliances is the Tok'ra. Um, we saw it in Season 1 where... Carter was inhabited by the Gould or Tok'ra technically, um, Jolinar, so that is why they go to one of the coordinates, meet up with some of them. Originally, the, the Tok'ra think that the alliance means that they want to offer hosts to blend with, since the Tok'ra allow for a truly symbiotic relationship rather than having the Gould um, control the hosts completely, and they avoid using... Um, the sarcophagus because they, they believe that it takes away from the ghouls and the host's soul. So a good bit of nuance there and um, an interesting story out there. Um, while they, while um, SG-1 and basically humans in this case don't want to offer a permanent solution of providing host, they do offer Sam's dad who's dying of cancer to um, blend with the host in order to build the alliance and get that ball rolling. So overall, a good um, start to that alliance there. And then this season also had my favorite episode of the season because it um, starts building on the story arc of the Asgard and alli making alliances with other races in the galaxy that are non-human and non gould So... That episode is titled The Fifth Race. It's the 15th episode in the season. And it, <clears throat> it or entails um, SG-1 going to a planet where they find some information that indicates um, that some of the, one of the races from Ernest's um, planet visited there and it might contain a repository of knowledge, which it does. But as um, Colonel O'Neill finds out, Humans are not they have not advanced to that point yet, where they can hold that knowledge or even contain, um, access that knowledge in any responsible way. But there are certain humans who have markers in their body that are of the ancients, the um, race that built the Stargates. So that's why he was able to access it. But he was not quite, or the human race hasn't advanced to the point yet where they're able to access that and not ultimately kill themselves or overload their brains as we saw what, what, what happened in the episode. Um, but Colonel O'Neill was able to build uh, basically a energy enhancer so that he could get make his way to a place that would allow for a race to um, take the knowledge out of his mind and save him. So essentially we not only get to meet the Asgard in this episode, but we learn uh, that there were four original races in the Alliance, so the Asgard, the Nox, the Furlongs, and the Ancients. But because of Colonel O'Neill's um, diplomacy and 
straightforwardness and frankness in the matter, he started to build our relationship um, to become the fifth race. So overall, in if anything, the in the season, the three episodes to watch would be the two on the Tokra and the fifth race because it built it. The these three episodes essentially build the foundation for what SU One is about to um, build those alliances going forward, and everything else is of note and interesting and essentially takes its building cues from here the the whole idea the whole war with the gold is something that goes on for quite some time and they do mention a few items in i think the Tokra episode because while sg1 was able to take out apophis um by killing him and ultimately we learn that he's still alive later in the season because he escaped but by initially killing him, it showed that the ghouls are vulnerable and it created a power vacuum among the rest of the ghouls that they wanted to take over his armies and um, consolidate their and expand their power. But it showed that the people of Earth are a threat and it was going to create more of a um, more attack on the humans because of their actions, even though they feel that they can defend themselves. But it created that. Or basically it was an, a big announcement to the universe that the people of Earth have advanced to the point where they can challenge the gold and their planet could be worth retaking even though they are the first world. So um, overall a good season, definitely worth uh, worth rewatching way um, when you are watching the uh, show. So while the last, so while season one was kind of spread out as far as the diplomacy and kind of the various things that are happening because of the Stargate. I would probably say like the season premiere, um, the season finale, maybe the episode called Politics and maybe one or two episodes were are worth seeing. It's kind of spread out evenly because uh, we have the team, or we have the Stargate issue, or we have season one kind of building on, we don't know what we're doing, but we're good. we want to figure out what to do with the Stargate, whether it's building technology or finding new technologies, building alliances, and all of that. It's still um, universe building, so to speak, because they still don't need to figure out what to do, or they still need to figure out all the intricacies of the Stargate, where they can go, what planets are there, what's going on in the universe, because essentially no one's or humans have been on their own, so they don't know what the state of the galaxy is. So season two builds upon that to kind of expand on what's going on in the galaxy and what the what the standing is of all the various races, political factions, um, the intricacies and nuances of what's going on. So season two starts building on those foundations for what is to come later on in the show. So that's all there is for this particular review. So with that, I'll start um, watching the third season to see... Uh, what is of note there and based on the key episodes and what progressions are made. So that is all for this particular episode. As far as upcoming reviews, I'll be doing a season two recap of The Mandalorian. Um, The Expanse just started, so I'm going to be watching those episodes, but I will still keep continuing in on um, SG-1 to make progress to watch all 11 seasons of the show to get that those reviews in as well. But if you want to get in touch with me, provide your feedback or um, anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, by supporting the show, you get access to um, upcoming scheduled content, show notes um, as they come up, and things like that. But as I mentioned, that's all there is for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.